lytter til din lokale radio i Aarhus på FM 98,7 MHz og 89,5 MHz. Hello everyone, this is Marta <laughs> and this is Anna and, and our intro is again missing legendary. <laughs> We are always like, you know, starting the live show, hoping to have the intro on and somehow uh, it doesn't come. But you guys know this is you've got five options. Yeah, you have to figure out because there is no intro. So if there is no intro, it means that that is us. <laughs> yeah. like, but you should see our faces who are just sitting here like in tension, waiting for our intro to kick in. And then there was no intro. So, yeah. Yeah, but it is us. It is Marta and Anna. And we are going to talk about love. Yes. Uh, and we will talk about love because it's spring, at least in the calendar. In, in, yes, in the calendar that counts. And because we actually received lately a lot of um, love related challenges. Yes, we have been all about love here around in You've Got Five Options. Some of us falling in love, others of us falling in love again and uh, solving challenges about love. And now is the Love Life Show. And oh. our lovely technician just put some candles on our table because apparently this is how disasters are about to happen. <laughs> are, are, we, are we hitting up the atmosphere? Yes, being romantic. Yes, I think the atmosphere today will be really hidden up because we are trying new things. First of all, we will try to play you some music, guys, and this is the first time. And after some uh, considerations and discussions, we actually decided to play it from uh, from another source and I'm responsible for that. So I feel a bit of a pressure. No pressure, everything's gonna be all right. We'll see, we'll see about that. But we have a couple of topics. Uh, some of you know the ones that are the fun, uh, fans of our Facebook fan page. Is this even the correct way to say it? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So some of you know that we made two announcements. One was uh, we asked you to Tell us what is your favorite love song and we will play it today on the radio show e show if God will help me. And we actually got two. So there will be two songs with a special dedications. And then we also asked a question. Marta, what was the question? It's like, what's your favorite romantic movie? And we got a lot of answers and we actually have top five favorite romantic movies by you've got five option fans or people who I simply forced to answer by tagging them in Facebook. So we have the results and we will tell you uh, about them in the second half of our today wonderful life live radio show. And there will be a twist to it because uh, that will be connected to one challenge that we have received uh, previously that we haven't solved yet and you will get in this way an answer to five ways of getting into a woman's heart yes so that will be a great connection here you have to wait for it it's going to be legendary yeah, we'll see <laughs> yeah but you know guys we will start with what is love yes because that is actually you know the theme of today's uh, show is uh, love so the proper question to ask is what is love and to be honest i think everyone is asking him or herself what is love and there was one guy who was asking so persistently that he even recorded a song about it so everyone, this is a moment when you have to imagine that you are listening to Hadaway, What is Love? Because due to copyrights, we cannot play this song neither on YouTube or on our podcast. So like, I would like you to like think about it, think about the song and now play it in your head for like five more minutes and then you're there. So guys, what is love? Yeah, I, I, I was actually trying to figure out this answer from his song because he's asking persistently, like, what is love? What is love? And then the only uh, message I get, it's like, baby, don't hurt me. No so more. It, no more. <laughs> so he was hurt once at least <laughs> so badly that he made a song about it. But I actually love this song. You know, uh, it's one of those uh, 
cheesy songs or something but uh, i think it's uh, super super awesome and i hope that you are in a good mood right now because you know someone asked you what is love oh. yes and we have some <laughs> exciting uh, music I here at the it. radio Okay. So, <laughs> guys, someone just started to vacuum clean. Is it vacuum cleaning? Yeah. Yes, yes, it is. Okay, our technician is not having his microphone on, but he just told us that yes, someone is vacuum cleaning because apparently a sign on the recording studio which says recording means nothing <laughs> in our radio. <laughs> okay, guys, but anyway, now the vacuum uh, cleaner has... Uh, stopped yes. <laughs> for now <laughs> yes yeah, so we can uh, proceed into answering that question of all times what is love you know love is the most powerful emotion yet it's so difficult to define there is so much discussion about uh, what the uh, emotion actually means and that word comes from an old english lufu the feeling of love which could also be romantic sexual attraction, affection, friendliness, the love of God. So if you just look at one word that is trying to describe so many different things, no wonder that we are freaking confused. How was it? Lufu? Lufu. And yes. what is that supposed to be? Feeling of love. Feeling of love. And romantic it's sexual attraction, affection, friendliness, and the love of God. It's describing all of this. So... I thought that maybe etymology is not all that useful here. Mm -hmm. So I have decided to ask the Googles, <laughs> the, the Uncle Google. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, putting uh, the, the uh, appreci appreciation for God and romantic feelings in one that is uh, one weird path that not many people want to take. And I think they shouldn't maybe. So basically, I thought that maybe Google will be smarter, you know, give us some better answer. And I found out that Love is a strong feeling of affection, a okay. strong feeling of affection and sexual attraction for someone. Mm. It's also affectionate greetings conveyed to someone on one's behalf, like give her my love. Ah, okay, that's yeah. Yes, it's also a formula for ending an affectionate letter. Take care, lots of love. It's also a personified figure of love often represented as Cupid. It's a noun, love. Mm -hmm. It's also a great interest and pleasure in something. Like, for example, I love chocolate. That's also described by the same, uh, you know, uh, thing. And it's also a person or thing that one loves. So she was the love of his life. And also, you can use it as a friendly form of uh, addressing someone like, that's right, love. Yeah, that's actually quite popular in Ireland, right? We have a friend in Ireland and she talks to everyone like, yeah, love and stuff. And I'm like, okay, that's really like uh, affectionate. So in order you were worried that we are abusing that powerful emotion for using it for so many different things. It's also used in tennis, squash and some other sports, a score of zero. Neil, love 15. So, okay, that, that was totally weird. That was a new thing for me. That was a learning. Mm -hmm. But that's all I found out from Google. So if you guys have ever been wondering why are we so confused about what love is, it's just because we are trying to use one word to describe completely different feelings, like the romantic love, like the friendly love, like the love between the mom and the child, and so like loving food. Yeah, and uh, some weird scoring in tennis, apparently, which was a surprise. But, you know, actually from this, uh, I would say from all these explanations and how Google is trying to explain what love is, I, pre I prefer Hathaway approach, you know, asking question openly with disco music. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, it, it's more like a journey for him. And I, I get more of the feeling from that than from Google. And I would say that the Greek people were much smarter than English people mm. because they have actually used seven different words for love. So probably for all those things that you just said, plus the tennis, they had a separate word? I don't know about the tennis one, but for example, they had eros, 
which was the sexual and erotic desire. Then you would have agape. This is the unconditional love, the divine love. Because if you are trying to use the same word for the divine love and the sexual love and the friendly love and the mother love, it's like, what do you really mean? Right? It's yes. like, what do you actually mean? So no wonder so much confusion in the world. About what is love. Yes. And one last thing that I wanted to tell you about when answering the question of what is love is that love is actually involuntary. So it's not something that we can absolutely have under control and decide to feel or not to feel like we can't just say no, feel love. No, don't feel love. It's actually brain science that tells us that love is a drive like thirst. So it's a craving for a spe specific person. Mm. And it's actually natural to lose control in the early stages of romance. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I would, I would have doubts about myself. Okay, that's, that's, that sounds uh, that I'm happy with that discovery. So time. that's, of course, the, the, you know, the sexual attraction part of love. That's definitely not the one that we talk about the mother to a child that I think. Well, I, I think some... mother to a child can also lose her uh, shit. Control. I mean, uh, co control. Right. Yes, I not... still, I f I'm forgetting. Am I, am I, sup am, am I allowed to use a uh, uh, an adult uh, vocabulary something yes oh, okay awesome so s shit yeah but you know actually mothers are also very very uh crazy sometimes you know about their kids and also they would do anything to protect them so there is something about this control true and losing the control true. you know true story but anyway love like thirst will make you do strange things but knowledge is power Okay, that sounds... Uh... So when you know about it, you can actually start getting to some degree into control. Yeah, of... actually, you are right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's all about the knowledge and the power. And if you think about those early stages of the romance, mm -hmm. the romantic part of love, and you treat it like an addiction, mm -hmm. you can actually gain a completely different perspective. Mm -hmm. Wish I knew that. Yeah. 15 so, years ago guys and onwards love is powerful love is beautiful and we would like to start our first dedication yeah. today yes we so as we mentioned at the very beginning two of our faithful listeners or at least this is how we like to envision them uh, asked us for uh, love songs their favorite love songs so the first one is uh, by a band called Aerosmith and it's called I don't want to miss a thing and this is actually a song that was uh, I think for many people this is one of their most favorite love songs Marta do you like this song I like this song it's not my favorite love song but we would like to dedicate it to another Marta yes who has uh, requested that song so Marta especially for you and for Alejandro to all your love it's apparently their song so we will hit it right now Okay, guys, so do you remember that little copyright thingy that I mentioned before? Well, we are still struggling with that issue. So on our live show, you could listen, Aerosmith, I don't want to lose a thing. Now you again have to imagine that we are playing this song. So you can actually find it on YouTube and just play it. But the dedication doesn't change. It is for Marta and her husband, Alejandro. So, yeah. And I will not sing it because that could potentially be also copyright thing, right? Well, don't answer, just imagine and uh, yeah. And we are back on our show. We are back on. Guys, uh, like this is the first time when we are playing music and we have to communicate with our two technicians here. <laughs> it was just uh, quite, a, quite a little bit of a technical challenge, but we managed to play at least three solid minutes of the song, especially for Marta <laughs> and Alejandro. Sveno is <laughs> laughing like crazy. He said that this will never happen again today. <laughs> so today we actually might be able to play the rest of the music as scheduled. Yeah. So we hope you have enjoyed the beautiful love song and that you are ready to hear some very interesting love 
facts. So this is how it goes. Marta gives a fact and she sees my life reaction to it. I'm so, very excited. So guys, uh, I have again, you know, reached out to the Googles and I have found a very interesting article uh, on BuzzFeed.com, the 25 heartwarming facts about love. Marta, can I ask you one thing before we will get into those facts? You called Google, Googles. Is it Googles or is it Google? It is Google, but I love to say the Googles. I heard it with my favorite life coach, Brooke Castillo. She says it and I think it's so uh, uh, funny and I have copycatted her. And okay. uh, yeah. Greetings to the Brooke Castillo. Yes. So guys, I have selected five of those facts that I thought were the most interesting and I will tell them now and we will see how Anna reacts and we will have a very short discussion on each of those facts. Fact number one, it takes less than four minutes to decide whether you have feelings for someone or not. And actually, that's a very short time. I know Sven uh, here, our technician is really shocked, but I actually would like to connect it right away mm -hmm. with the fact number two because that's where the even more interesting part comes. And that decision is based mostly on body language. And specifically, 55% on body language, 38% on tone of voice and only 7% on what the person is actually saying. Okay, so this is a good news for all the people that have absolutely nothing interesting to say because it's only 7% of your success in a in a love department apparently. My god, it's so interesting. You only need 4 minutes and it's all about how your body behaves, mm -hmm. you know, and the tone of your voice. Only 7% on what you say. So all the people who are trying to be smart <laughs> Don't bother. Yes, or exciting or entertaining, <laughs> you know, or catch up phrases. <laughs> you just have to walk with a swagger, apparently. And what else? The tone of the voice. Yeah. A holly. I am. I, I have a hamster voice. I'm not sure if that's a good. So maybe for you, it's to not to talk and uh, just look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not about looking pretty, neither. It's about body language. So it's actually about the way you walk and move and uh, right walk pretty walk pretty <laughs> well i've heard i walk pretty so that's that's okay that's checked voice is kind of like mm, and apparently what i'm saying doesn't matter but is it for guys or for girls or for both of the sexes for, for the peoples for the peoples it's the same as googles <laughs> yes <laughs> the, the peoples and the googles none of so, them exist none of them exist exactly so i would say that uh i think I read some research that men are way more, um, you know, um, stimulated by the way a woman uh, moves or looks. But I really, I don't think I discovered anything new today. Uh, so I would say that for men, I would definitely believe it. For women, I'm not so sure because if I look back at all the men I, I was interested in, I did not have that interest in the first four minutes of meeting them. Uh, uh, sorry for uh, any men that I might have been interested in and <laughs> for that revelation. <laughs> what, what's then? It's six minutes, yes, in your case? Yes, that's... In his case, it's six minutes. Okay. But uh, yeah, I think that for women, it might not be necessarily true. What about what about you, Marta? So I think, of course, there are so many different factors when it comes like to choosing the partner, you know, mm -hmm. or getting involved with someone in a relationship. But that just telling about your first reaction. First, if, impression. if you're going to be interested in someone in that romantic way or not, it can change later, of mm -hmm. course, especially for women. We know that there are so many different factors exactly. that we can get interested with men also later based on diff on other things. But to be honest, I also remember myself meeting a guy and by the way, like how confident he is, the way he talks to me, I can definitely get interested or not. So I think for me, this is also true. It doesn't mean that I will choose that man for my life partner, but definitely there is something about that sparkles that mm -hmm. uh, interest or not. So I have seen myself in those situations, of course. And uh, yeah, <gasps> that's why so many mailmen and milkmen are suspected 
to, you know, have affairs with their customers because what you see is the way he approaches the door with the milk or, or with the letter. And then it's not what like what he says, like, I have a letter for you. That's not an interesting topic, but I have a letter for you. That makes so much sense right now. Yeah, maybe men are more based on the actual appearance of mm. a woman, maybe uh, more than uh, women to men. I don't know. Uh, there are some statistics here that uh, put us all into the same um, bucket, so to speak. But I do also think that we women, we it's maybe a little bit different, but it, there is something about the confidence. There is something we are more interested in strong and confident men than in the weak, tiny boys unfortunately, in the first four minutes, statistically as well. Statistically, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, I think uh, it's not even about being tiny or not, and I mean it on many levels. I think it's about the way you carry yourself. Yeah. I, I totally agree. It's about the way you walk. Okay, that's that's all I have to say because I'm waiting for fact number three. Yes, so this one I found very, very interesting. Fact number three. When two strangers are forced to talk and maintain eye contact for a while, it can make them fall in love. And there is more to it because it's just like, oh, okay, so. But they actually run an experiment where strangers of the opposite sex were put in a room together for 90 minutes where they talked about intimate details and then stared into each other's eyes without talking. Many felt a deep attraction for each other and two married each other six months later. Oh, holy. Well, we cannot do it here, but we actually have two technicians here, Julian and Svenno. You can maybe, could you please stare in your eyes for half an hour? <laughs> we'll see the results after. No, actually, no, Svenno, you have to actually look at the, the equipment. Okay. No way. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, so you don't like to be experimented on. Yeah, but you know, with the with the eye contact, I've heard it before. And in interesting circumstances, because this is what my one of my colleagues once told me, and then he was looking at me weirdly. I was like, okay, but I didn't felt it. No, but of course, I'm sure you cannot do it with every single stranger, yeah, right? That's true. I, I think there there are always all these other factors. Yeah, because then you will look like a creep if you look at anyone with your like eyes and trying to stare at them. Mm -hmm. But there is power in our eyes, for sure. Yeah, I really think that looking deeply into somebody else's eyes is a powerful thing. Isn't eyes the gate to our soul? Yeah, mm. or windows. You can uh, windows gates. You know. Yeah. Just just those things that you. <laughs> yes, Feno. We we see the the gates of your soul now, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so uh, I think that's an interesting fact. And now fact number four. Mm -hmm. A little bit softer, a little bit different perspective now. Let's see. Let's Expressing see. gratitude toward people you love causes an immediate spike in your happiness. So if I express gratitude towards a person I love, that makes me happy. Yes. Okay, that's an interesting twist because I thought that if they are grateful for something I did and they tell me that they are grateful, then I, of course, I'm happy. But actually, you are right. That's why we actually feel like saying all those nice, sweet things to people we care about. So basically, I was looking for that kind of proof because very often when we are solving the challenges, we are mentioning uh, gratitude. And we are mentioning that gratitude is this wonderful, positive emotion that impacts your happiness. We we always provide it in a person like when we talk about how to have a happier life or more fulfilled life, we talk about gratitude. And actually this, uh, if you guys are interested and would like to find out more, you can go to BuzzFeed and find those 25 heartwarming facts about love. There is always a video or an article for each of those facts. So if you would like to find out more to see the experiments they have been running, etc., you can definitely see more. But I actually believe so much this is true and it's nice uh, to see uh, the experiment that actually when you are expressing gratitude you are feeling happier it's beautiful gratitude that's why it's so beautiful because uh, it makes you happy universal cure for everything gratitude yeah yeah so that was the uh, very valuable fact that i wanted to bring to the table mm -hmm. 
And uh, now the fact number five uh, mm -hmm. in our when solving our challenge, our uh, love related challenge uh, recently, we spoke about uh, that falling in love is very easy, but staying in love is quite difficult. So now the fact number five is on average, people fall in love seven times before getting married. Se you say seven? Yes, that's the statistics mm -hmm. here. So some people, of course, will only do it once. So there's 40. But mm -hmm. uh, again, mathematics on my end. Uh, so I have to be careful here. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, Marta has a very creative usage of mathematics, which you can hear in our episodes where we do when where we are solving life challenges it's every monday and wednesday at 11 30 and then uh, marta actually is using her creative mathematical skills to help people yeah so it's awesome now i'm just reading so it's safe <laughs> but <laughs> there are letters there so be careful yeah, be careful yeah <laughs> but it is seven times before getting married so how many times have you fell in love before you got married Oh, man, that's a difficult question because it depends. You know, sometimes actually when I was preparing myself for all those challenges and this live show mm -hmm. and when I was reading, you can fall in love and it can be a very short, uh, short lived like yeah. flame or something. Yeah, yeah. So that's also how we define love, because love for me, like loving someone, falling in love, being in love, they are very mm -hmm. different. So I think I have been in love several times maybe even five or seven like it says here but it sometimes was something that i felt for a month <laughs> for example yeah or, that's true so it's it's also depend depends on how you define uh, that feeling what about you how many times you yes and i can see now why <laughs> why things unfolded in my life the way they did because before i got married i fell in love only one time and now i'm not married anymore for years but I think in total now when I was counting, I think in total I fell in love seven times in my life. So that would mean that the next one is is the, the, the next marriage. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Sounds, sounds, sounds good. like uh, you guys uh, have heard that. So sounds get very ready. promising. Yes. And uh, if you want to get to uh, to find out how to get to Anna's heart, you definitely have to <laughs> listen to the second part oh, of yes. our show today. But now I think it's the time to have another love song. Yes, and that was our second request. Uh, and it came from uh, Nikki, Nikki Forrest, who is right now, I think, somewhere on a, on a vacation in, okay, I don't want to lie, Thailand. And I actually really uh, find his choice uh, amusing and funny and amazing. But this is uh, Nikki's favorite love song. Puddle of Mud, She Hates Me. So the last song that we have played on our live show on Friday was uh, She <clears throat> Hates Me by Puddle of Mud. And that was a very special uh, dedication to Nikki Forrest, who claimed that this is his favorite uh, love song, which is confusing yet when you think about it quite understandable. So anyway, again, due to copyrights, we cannot play it for you guys. Uh, you just have to find it by yourself and listen to it. So I would just recommend you to tune in to our live show next time, which is uh, every odd Friday at two o'clock. Um, and there is a special uh, secret internet place that you can uh, find it. And the address it's in the um, in the show notes of our podcast. So yeah, just do that. Then you can hear the song. You don't have to imagine. Beautiful song. That's an interesting choice for your favorite love song, uh, I have to say. But if you look about, uh, look at this, this is actually like, you know, I thought about it like Tony Braxton's Unbreak My Heart, just like in a rock version and with some cursing, which of course you could not hear because this is a radio edit that we have played for you. Yes. So, Marta, what is next on the menu? So, the next thing on the menu is the five ways to win women's heart. 
And this is a question that we have received from uh, one of our um, listeners uh, through our website, the5options.com. And right now you are going to get a very interesting answer uh, because you are going to get an answer based on top five favorite romantic movies by our listeners. Yes, because guys, uh, yeah, maybe we are females, but we don't really have all the answers. And we have thought that the public vote would be the best to decide what are the five best strategies to to get to the woman's heart. So we have asked you uh, yesterday to give us the titles of your favorite romantic movies. And we have the results today. And we will, we will, of course, tell them, but literally and slowly. But before we will get to the top five, I would like to say that there were five uh, movies that didn't make the top five, but they were quite close. And that's Nothing Hill. Marta, do you know this movie? I know this movie, uh, but I have seen it long time ago. Was it something about the runaway bride or it's not? The, no, that's <laughs> not the one. <laughs> but it was still with Julia Roberts. <laughs> no. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, and with Hugh <laughs> Grant, yes, yes, okay. Yeah, now, uh -huh. I, you know, asking me about movies is like asking me yes, about mathematics. Like falling into so. a black hole in the universe and <laughs> waiting for, for something to happen. No, but you did a good job. Julia Roberts was there. Then we also had One one Day. I don't know, it has to be something new. I didn't even heard about it. What nope. Eat, Pray, Love. I yes. heard about it. I Julia Roberts again. Again, Julia Roberts. Okay, maybe as an actress she would want. Then we have Crazy Stupid Love. I love this one. Uh, maybe you have voted. Maybe I have. Maybe you have. And we have Deadpool, which I personally consider as one of the best love movies ever made. Yes, so those are the movies that had more than one vote and they didn't make the cut because there were five other movies that took the five top spaces. And I think that it's uh, fair to uh, mention some other interesting titles, like we got Hannibal. And we got The Exorcist. Thank you, Spano. Mm -hmm. But that didn't win. I'm sorry, you were the only one voting for that movie. <laughs> and <laughs> okay, don't cry. And we also got Blade Runner, which actually is an amazing love story. But I think some people were maybe a bit confused, like, okay, so what should we uh, choose? But I think it's any story that is romantic for you. So we will publish the full list of the movies that made the cut, made the list uh, on our fan page. Uh, you've got five options uh, on Facebook. But let's try to see. What are the five top favorite romantic movies by you guys? And what would be then five strategies to get into the woman's heart? And instead of telling you what is actually uh, the movie title, we'll just play a very, very short, how to say it, team song? Yeah, how, how yeah. yeah, and give you an opportunity to guess. To guess, exactly. So we start with this one. That one is probably possible to guess. Uh, do you think it's obvious? <laughs> uh, I would say that, you know, most of the people who have a TV uh, or have ever had a TV or <laughs> ever went to the cinema. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a movie, huh? Ladies and gentlemen, number five, Titanic. Titanic. Oh, my God, I couldn't even pronounce it. Titanic. So now... Uh, that's the movie that was number five on the list yes. of the favorite uh, love movies. And that's a long, long two and a half hours epopoeia about a big sinking ship. So how can you use that movie to inspire our anonymous friend who has asked us how to get to a woman's heart? So I decided that we should approach it from three different angles. Strategy in the movie profile of the seducer and target market, meaning what women would fall for it. So the strategy in Titanic was to save a woman's life. 
and even if this means that you will die in a process. And uh, if you uh, have not seen Titanic, then congratulations, you are an alien. And actually, I should say that this part of the program will have spoiler, spoiler, okay. This is a spoiler alert, guys. Okay, no, no. <laughs> a little bit behind <laughs> on the schedule for the spoiler alert. Okay, so if you have not if you have not seen Titanic, please like don't, don't listen for a for a minute. But uh, the thing is, you know that there is this uh, guy, and this is the profile. So who you would have to become in order to pull this strategy successfully? You would have to be poor, an artist talented one, spontaneous, cheerful with uh, big dreams. And this is actually a good guy profile. This is not a bad guy. And your target market is upper class bored girls with wild at heart, but forced by their mothers to marry a rich guy for money. So uh, if you are uh, poor and an artist and you are cheerful and spontaneous, uh, then uh, you can have a big success within uh, ladies from an upper class that are bored and they look for some fun. However, as we said in a strategy, uh, the, the gentlemen have uh, passed away in a process of a seduction. <laughs> and I still think there was a room for both of them on that door. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there was a lot of theories. And I could clearly see they could change it because you know, like there was a door and they were swimming in the ocean and then they had to like, you know, survive. And then you know, she could sit on a door for five minutes, then he could go in, you know, they would make some movement. I still think it's an overreaction. But I guess, you know, that that was that made it dramatic. Uh, but actually, it started with him saving her life from a suicide. So that's your first strategy. Yes. Now let's have a look at the fourth one, number four. You know, we are starting from the end, so to speak. Yes. And so number four. And now you will listen a little bit of a piece which you may or may not recognize because this movie, guys, didn't have a theme song. So I think that's why it's so low on our top five. <laughs> Yes, guys, this is a notebook. I would have never guessed. Yes, I, I was actually uh, trying to find what was the theme song, you know, the theme strong love song for notebook. There was none. It was only the sad piano over and over again, the entire movie. So, uh, yeah. But I guess if you love that movie, if that's one of your favorite, then you have probably guessed Hopefully. by listening to uh, to that uh, beautiful piano. Mm -hmm. But let's hear what's the strategy behind. So the strategy and now spoiler alert is interrogate a woman you are in love with about her dream house. Don't talk to her for a couple of years and in the meantime, build that house in a secret afterwards publish the picture of that house in a local newspaper and hope that she will see it this is pretty much how that gentleman and i don't even remember the name of the character you should never ask me those questions played you know. by a uh, delicious ryan gosling that's the g what was his name mm. so forgettable but you know we know the actors you know so this is how he conquered her heart you know he built the house that five years before she vaguely described and then he like built it and you know she was engaged to another guy but he built it and he hoped that she will see it in the local newspaper because that was like in 40s or 50s now he would use facebook or instagram and this is how he won her heart and you know uh, he actually has a very similar profile to to jack Do uh, to jack dawson jack dawson Jack, I don't know about the, the, the Titanic guy. Yeah, Jack. I know it's Jack. But okay, I Jack. Jack D. Jack D. He's uh, yet again another uh, poor man and uh, also very spontaneous, but persistent in a creepy way. And you know, to build a house for someone for five years in secret, that's that's a bit, you know. But the target girl was also a uh, upper class. She was from another class. That was the problem in the movie because her parents were against apparently. And that's uh, that's actually the profile of the girl. So another upper class rich girl bored with her life. Marta, what do you think? I'm not an upper class uh, lady and I'm not bored with my life. So I don't have much to say. But if there would be a guy that 
you had a fling with and you tell him about your dream house and five years later you see on Facebook that he built a house exactly as you describe it. Uh, would you go for it? So, Anna, as you know, it's always about the perspective. If you feel the same about the guy as he feels about you, you will find it as the most romantic gesture. If you don't feel that way, you will think he's a creepy stalker. So that's all. that always depends on, you know, the mutuality of feelings. I totally agree, but I would just like to say it's always good to have a house if you want to get the girl. That's just all I'm saying. I think that we can land on that, right? So now we are going to our top three. And the third place on our list is... I wonder if there is a person in this world that doesn't know from which movie that song comes from. Well, I think there are some people, for example, in Africa that may not necessarily know. (laughs) I think they know uh, Dirty Dancing in Africa because, guys, this is Dirty Dancing. One of my super favorite movies when I was uh, younger. I love this movie. I was obsessed with that movie. And I have to tell you that if a guy would pull a strategy like Patrick Swayze did Uh, aka Johnny, I I would go for it. I would fall for him. Yeah. So this is a successful one, Marta. So that's guys, everyone who is interested in winning Anna's heart. That's the one (laughs) you don't have to die. You just have to I evolved be like uh, (laughs) like Johnny. Uh, So for those of you who are not 100% sure what that strategy and profile were, Anna, will you? Well, you have to become the hottest dancer in the area. Then you have to make some troubles. You have to break some windows and some jaws. And then you have to know how to make a dramatic exit. But then even more dramatic comeback. And I am referring to famous Nobody puts baby in a corner because that's just like that line when he comes in, opens the door of that, you know, weird farewell gathering for those people in that hotel. And then he goes straight to her and he's like, nobody puts baby in a corner and he takes her on the dance floor. Yes. And uh, surprisingly, I would like to say that the target market is again a girl uh, from an upper class because she was uh, from a good family but this time the profile is i'm a bit young a bit idealistic and naive and i want to save the world so actually that's a that's a a little bit different target market and a little bit more similar to you huh well i do want to save the world exactly (laughs) (laughs) okay that is correct so um i think that we are ready to reveal the number two and we are doing this just right now Baby, I'm too lost in you Come in, you lost in Everything about you so deep I can't see, I can't think I just think about And I know that for some of you it might be a little bit confusing because that was not the main song associated with that movie, but because I could choose the songs, I chose my favorite song from the movie, and that movie is Love Actually. That's a great movie. That was my favorite movie for a while. And definitely that's uh, not the song that I would recognize the movie by. Uh, there could be a couple of other songs uh, that I would first uh, recognize the movie by. But the, mo- the song is very good. Yes, it's actually very good. It's by Sugar Babes, and uh, I really like it. So... Now tell us, what's the strategy here? The strategy here for all the men who would like to use the strategy from the movie is wait for Christmas. That, that's all. That's all you have to do. You just have to wait for Christmas and then, <laughs> then you will probably get some. <laughs> this, this, but there are eight different love stories in that movie, right? And actually, first time I saw this movie... It was because I thought it's a Christmas movie and I like Christmas movie. I don't like romantic movies, but then I like the movie just because it was cool and awesome. And there are eight different plots and, you know, it's Christmas and everyone gets his way in a way. So I would say wait for Christmas. That's your strategy. 
But there, I think there is something also about the big gestures, isn't it? Like be ready to like that. I Show think the that's that's the whole magic of this movie because everyone gets sooner or later out of his comfort zone to get the woman or the man he or she wants and I think that's the that's the fantastic thing this is what we love about this movie you know like uh, when uh, Hugh Grant who is playing the prime minister he is just you know looking uh, for that uh, cute secretary oh my god now when I think about it that was such a cliche It doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. It looked cute on the movie. So then he like walks from a house to house and he's even forced to sing some carols or, you know, like uh, Colin Flirt and that uh, Portuguese woman that was learning English in secret just to, you know, communicate with him. There is so many cute, adorable things and they explode because people are willing to like, you know, go for it, you know, do that one crazy gesture that will even bring you either bring you a success or mark you as a total creep for life. But that's a risk you have to take. You may win or you may lose and take it as a lesson. Exactly. <laughs> But Always take it as a lesson. But now it's the time to reveal the winner and the number one strategy. Yes, and I think it will be a shocker for all of you. But let's hit it. <laughs> Shocker, huh? Now, can you believe it that Pretty Woman won? I cannot believe it. It's unbelievable. You know, it's like, duh, of course, Pretty Woman won. It's like I saw it. You know how many people were like putting this in the comments. So, yes, guys, Pretty Woman is your favorite love movie ever, at least according to our small little uh, survey. And now we have just a moment to tell you what's the strategy here. Well, the strategy is get rich and try to pick up some random, random prostitutes. And uh, then you have to be emotionally unavailable and rich. And if you can climb a fire escape stairs, then you will do just fine. Because that's actually the, the last thing that this is how he got her heart. I don't know if you remember. Spoiler alert, alert again. Uh, at the end of the movie, you know, of course, there is a conflict because she's like prostitute or actually almost she was, but she wasn't. And he's rich and he's messed up by father issues, all this kind of things. And he has this creepy, uh, like a uh, pervert friend. There was a lot of things going on. But the bottom line is that they separated and then he realized he wants her back. So what does he do? He climbs on the fire escape exit the stairs and he has a fear of heights and she knows about it very very well so he actually overcomes his biggest fear just to show that he loves her and he has some roses that always comes handy you know so i think the strategy here is well if you want to get the profile this is difficult to be you know rich like this but I would say it again, the grand fucking gesture, you know, something that shows I'm going all in. And this is how you can get the woman of your dreams. So dear anonymous person who have sent us uh, that question. Now you have five very interesting strategies. We do not recommend dying. That's no, uh, definitely no. not our recommendation. I think Jack, Jack lost. That's why he's on uh, number five, you know. Yeah. But anyway, we wish you good luck with uh, the strategies because we imagine that if you are uh, telling us, uh, if you are asking that question, that means that you probably have someone that you would like to apply it on. Mm -hmm. So, And I would say, you know, uh, trust the public vote. If uh, people who voted and, you know, those were girls and boys said that, you know, this is their favorite romantic movie, then I guess that means that those strategies touched something in their hearts. So you just, you know, you can just take a look at it. I think we'll, we will release the whole, you know, results and also other movies that were mentioned. And I think that you can just get inspired from that because we all like to live the fantasies that are shown in the movies. So everyone, thank you for being here with us today. Yes. And we hope that you have enjoyed the show. And remember that we will be live again 
uh, in a month actually because yeah. next time uh, unfortunately there is a bank holiday and the radio will be closed yes so thank you for today and enjoy your weekend enjoy your weekend guys and we hope to get some questions from you via our website or via our uh, fan book page bye 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 Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next.